Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Divine Debut. Happy Equinox. Um, happy Astrological New Year. Today, the 20th of March of 2021. Happy birthday, dear Aries. The sun's just ingressed into your sign. Okay, so this is your solar year. It's a uh, it's your wild card. I always see the solar return as all the blessings coming in um, as the sun brings clarity, brings healing to your life. Remember that uh, as the sun, especially for those of you as well, I should say, not especially, for those of you that have got Aries on your rising, obviously the sun is crossing over your rising sign. So Aries Sun people and Aries rising, very important date. The If the Sun is crossing over your rising, if you're an Aries, let's say, now I haven't got Aries here at the horizon. Um, a lot of you are already familiar that I usually put Aries here, just to make it simpler to understand. I think those of you that follow me already get it, that if Aries was here, then all these planets would be on this side. So um, it just happens that uh, I have Aries on the, you know, at the top of the chart right here. This is the midheaven. Anyway, so the sun has just crossed over. So happy birthday, Aries. And for those of you that are Aries rising, this is very similar to a second birthday. So Venus is uh, practically here as well everyone so she's just finishing up in Pisces we know she's very strong in the sign of Pisces she likes she likes Pisces and she's very um she loves unconditionally so happy equinox happy astrological new year and uh, today on the 20th patreon is up and running for those of you that are interested in joining and becoming a patron through um, through this platform, which um, is a platform where you can get a lot more content um, at a much better price than purchasing individual uh, videos. And I want to thank you so much for your support. I'd like to also mention, which is it's very important, that those of you that are going to join from today until the 31st of March, um, please know that it is for free. For those of you that are just wondering, what is that all about? What content will be on there? Let me just check it out. It is for free up until the 31st of March. From the 1st of April, you will be billed. So if you're not happy with the content and don't want to continue the subscription you may exit you may leave you may cancel okay so i want to thank you so much for pledging to be a patron for divine debut this is you giving support to me as i give you a lot more content on there and very importantly to say also is that in each tier there will be a free giveaway a free reading um so that will be happening every month. For instance, if you uh, pledge Tier 3 on Tier 3, um, you get everything else that comes from Tier 1 and Tier 2. So Tier 3 gives you a lot more. Um, it may be a little bit more expensive, but it gives you much more back as well. And, of course, the Tier 3 people are also... Uh, they also go into the draw for the Tier 1, Tier 2 free readings as well. So anyway, thank you again. Let's go on to the astrology. As I was saying that uh, Venus has uh, recently conjoined with Neptune about six days ago. So today, today is the 20th, let's say around the 14th. Um, and for some of you, it may have been something quite magical. For others of you, it may have been difficult. Remember that Neptune has got two sides. He's very powerful in Pisces. He's got 
that other side which can be very uh, emotional, elusive, uh, confusing, deceptive as well uh, because everyone, of course, a conjunction can go either way. Okay, a conjunction, of course, when they come together, it could be magical, uh, a magical romantic uh, situation that you're dealing with. And remember that Neptune uh, is, it is the divine, it is very spiritual. So a spiritual connection uh, may have happened for you, for some of you, or some of you may have also been deceived by someone you thought was a spiritual connection for you. It could go either way. Okay, logically um, with Neptune in Pisces, Venus in Pisces, you would have seen a lot of dreams, a lot of important dreams, dreams that would give you messages, important messages, because even the messenger is in uh, Pisces here. Actually, Mercury entered the sign of Pisces, which Mercury doesn't like Pisces, um, about five days ago, so around the 16th, Mercury is about logic, it's about communication. Try talking underwater. <laughs> no one's going to understand what you're talking about, so Mercury sort of drowns in here. He's all about air. Remember, he rules Gemini. Virgo is very related to Gemini as well as they because they share the same ruling planet, even though Virgo is Earth. But the main ruling planet of Mercury is Gemini, okay, more importantly. And that's why Mercury being the curious one, asking those questions, just like a child does. Gemini is very much the child, right? And Gemini has got two sides to it, so therefore they always like to ask questions or do their own research. Remember that Gemini people, and I don't know if you've noticed, a lot of air signs, Gemini would say more than likely, more so, uh, they love to talk. A good conversation is they really love to chat. They're uh, really good friends to sit and have a cup of coffee with. <laughs> anyway, and Virgo and Gemini get along really well. I've got really good Gemini friends, myself being a Virgo. Anyway, we understand each other. So, okay, Mercury's um, transiting through Pisces. Again, communication could be a little bit funny as Mercury's in the water, in the deep. And Mercury is coming up to Neptune and Venus, which means we could be having, um, if we've been doing our homework, our research, uh, we could have clarity relating to this conjunction which happened a few days ago, I feel. And remember that because Mercury rules a Virgo right across, therefore it's not happy, it's not strong in Pisces. All right, so Venus, Venus is about to cross over. If you are a Aries rising, uh, Venus is about to cross over your rising sign, which naturally rising would be here and it enters the first house right your first house which means you're going to start looking beautiful <laughs> um, you could be earning good money I mean Venus is money it's things that we love it's things of value now, you may have created you may have been working let's say for some of you behind the scenes I mean, Pisces is usually quite a dark house. It's it's a quiet house. It's a dark house. It's like I'm in my cave, right? And I'm creating something magical. I'm connecting to spirit, to the divine. I'm getting those downloads, right? So, or I'm meditating. I'm sleeping. I'm taking some time on my own hoping to be able to create something where love, money, values is concerned, something that will be very uh, giving. Remember, Pisces gives unconditionally. So some of you may have been working behind the scenes, and therefore you can feel that drum roll as Venus is just about to pop into Aries, everyone. Remember that Pisces, it's more about going to sleep. 
you know, I want to sleep, I need some time to check out. It's very quiet, Pisces is very quiet, but now that the sun has moved into Aries, we feel as though there is a ma massive change, remember because Pisces is naturally the 12th house, therefore as the sun finishes up in Pisces, it's about finishing something off before we get to start from the beginning again. We get that brand new cycle, a whole new year where astrology is concerned. So the sun loves to be in Aries. It's exalted there. It absolutely loves it. It's Aries is fire. The sun is warmth. It's fire. It's healing. It's We get the energy to move forward. Why? Because Aries is ruled by Mars. Okay, so um, as you can see, as you can see, Chiron is uh, not far off as well, and Chiron could be an open wound and a wounding of thyself. Uh, you know, I'm not good enough. I cannot take this risk. I'm not the warrior. I'm going to fall flat on my face. Some of you with the sun conjoining with Chiron, look, the sun, first of all, will show the wound, whether this is a wound of yours or another person's. Remember, it can be a psychological, it can be a physical wound, it can be an emotional wound as well. The sun will provide you with clarity. And remember that the, the sun also is the ego. So a wounding of the ego could be shown to you, but the sun does bring clarity and it does bring the potential for healing, okay, as Venus is also going to be, um, she will be entering as well. Um, by the time you get this video, she'll be practically in the sign, she will ingress into Aries. So Venus will take up the, uh, she will become much more powerful, she will become the Athena in mythology of war. She will be the goddess warrior, okay, where love, wounding of thyself and anything to do with beginnings is concerned. Remember that Aries is a seed. It's that seed and in the tarot it's the fool where uh, the fool begins a new journey. Now he's takes the risk and he jumps off that cliff but he knows because he's already been enlightened he's just finished the Pisces season where he's done his connection he has he's healed any wounds and he has connected with spirit and knows that spirit is there there you know the hands the embrace of spirit will keep him afloat, will not let him get hurt. Okay, so this is, as I said, this uh, Pisces, the House of Pisces reminds me of the Four of Swords in the Tarot as the warrior needs to heal before he gets ready for battle. Now with the sun ingressing into Aries, we're ready for battle. So... It's a time of taking action. Remember that Mars ruling Aries, it's all about our desires. Let's move forward. Now, Mars is um, in Gemini. Mars is fire, Gemini is air. It can be even faster. I mean, Mars should be running forward now at his peak because with the wind beneath his wings, he can actually fly faster. Um, remember that Mars does speak of anything um, that is uh, mobile, anything that is quick. So it could be a car, could be a bike, could be a motorbike, I mean. Anything to do with um, sharp obje objects, our desires, our wants, our needs, what we want to create, what we want to manifest. But Mars is coming up to the North Node, which means it's already connecting which is telling me that something to do with our North Node, the collective North Node and our own personal North Node, because remember that the, the sky is, whatever is happening in the sky affects the world as well as our own little 
um, lives, our own homes, our own families, our own um, our own situation, and our own paths. So we are affected by the um, the planetary motions and movements. And as I see Mars um, going extra fast towards moving extra fast towards the North Node, because the North Node is it's what we need to be growing into and what is fated, obviously fated um, situations will be playing out, uh, but the North Node is also difficult. It's what we need to grow into. So we're coming up to, it could be a lesson or it could be a growth spurt, I would call it, because remember when Mars is with the North Node, it's also in opposition to the South Node, which is also karmic. And it's something that we need to, we're in opposing forces uh, to what we need to shed something to do with the past. Remember Sagittarius, those old outworn beliefs. Okay, um, matters of the past, matters uh, of our truth. We're needing to sort of speak our truth and shed you know, share our truth first of all and any matters of Sagittarius we need to be leaving them behind. Just like long distance travel because Sagittarius is also long distance travel. Just the fact that we are not able now to travel long distance, that is South Node in Sagittarius and we're all going around and around in circles close to our environment, our neighborhood, that is what Gemini is all about. The North Node is there. So we're connecting to people that are closer to our home. Now remember that Mars, as I said, um, because Gemini is also matters of mobility. Okay, short distance travel. Therefore Mars here says that we're going around the block, <laughs> driving around our block because we've lost our marbles because we're not allowed to go any further than that. That can be difficult, right? <laughs> anyway, also the fact that we've got um, Saturn, we've got Saturn in a trine um, to Mars. Now they're both malefic planets, Saturn in Aquarius, uh, both air signs. And a trine is very helpful now. Gemini is the communicator, right? I'm going to take that chance, I'm going to look behind the curtain, says Mars, I'm the warrior. I'm going to have that important conversation so that therefore I could help someone make up their mind whether they're going to, um, because if there's been a limiting uh, Saturn here, uh, anything to do with the law, right, Saturn in Aquarius can be the law, but remember that Aquarius is all about freedom and it's all about that higher mind. So I'm using my logical mind, Gemini, and my higher mind to, a trine is very helpful, to bring the best out of this connection. So Saturn, limiting, um, imprisoning, I'm going to say, because of the law, because of the government, because of the strict teacher because I've got a strict parent. Integrity. Has there been integrity so that I could move forward and create something long lasting? Remember this can also be a growth spurt because Saturn is the elder whereas Gemini is the child. Okay, so any restrictive energies limiting even karmic, are in good aspect right now to be able to move forward and it is very fated. And the moon is transiting through Gemini so a lot of conversations, maybe even opening up, having the passion and the desire to have that important conversation, even you know being curious about the other person, remember the twins, the other person's emotional stance, um, feelings. Okay, so Moon in Gemini can also be um, 
difficulty in making a decision, being very emotional to the point where it's hard for me to make a certain decision. Okay, now remember the moon is also fierce. It's not only my subconscious. For those of you that are receiving messages from your, you're seeing signs and synchronicities, you're seeing dreams, you're having important um, mythical uh, synchronistic dreams and very prophetic dreams, that would be the energy of Neptune, of course, in Pisces, but also with the moon in Gemini, because Gemini is like, I get it, yeah, I get it, I, I can see the logic in that, I understand what is communicated to me, even though I'm wearing the rose-colored glasses, I still get it. Now, what I wanted to mention also is that um, at we've got Juno here at 22 degrees of Sagittarius and Juno is the asteroid of commitment and relationships and, you know, how we want to nurture uh, a certain person or not. And it's interesting that Juno is in square to uh, Neptune here in square and square is difficult. And I'd just like to also mention that we're going to have, we are going to be having a, new moon um, in the sign of Aries. Of course, they're going to be having their new moon as it is uh, their birthday. That will be happening on the 11th or 12th of the month of April. It will be happening at 22 degrees. 22 degrees, though, of Aries, okay, which Aries is right here. So we've got fire connecting to fire. And why am I saying fire? Because obviously Aries is here as the sun will come to the 22nd degree and the moon will conjoin for a new moon. That will be at the 22nd degree. Therefore, well, obviously Juno does not move a lot. So that will be in trine. Okay, so beautiful. For you personally, are you familiar with your own chart? Where is Aries in your own chart? Where is Sagittarius in, in your own birth chart, your natal chart? For those of you that are not familiar with your charts, you can always go to astro.com, put in your details and get your natal chart done, run, and therefore you could see by putting in the correct birth time, you could see what your rising sign is, where your moon was, and where, obviously, what degrees the sun was, and where everything is placed in your birth chart, where the planets were as you took your first breath. For those of you that have difficulty in doing that, you cannot do it, you're not familiar how you're supposed to go about it, you can always email me at divinedebut11 at gmail.com, and I will run your chart for you and send it out to you. It's for free, okay? So... So, as I was saying, Juno is at 22, so we're going to have a beautiful trine on the new moon in Aries on the 11th or 12th of the month. Good luck, Aries. That's amazing. Something really good where partnerships and relationships are concerned will be happening for you. But what I also wanted to point out to you, because the new moon will be at the 22nd degree, at the 22nd degree for Aries, um, we did have, um, and I want to connect this with Mars as well, because we did have, back in 2020 in December, we had a Sagittarian solar eclipse at the 23rd degree, which is where Juno is sitting now. And... Obviously, a solar eclipse is a new beginning, 
but to have a new beginning, it's very important to make space so that there is space so we can have a new beginning, right? A solar eclipse means I'm eclipsing something out, therefore to start something new. And they were quite powerful eclipses on the 14th of December, actually, in Sagittarius, a solar eclipse. Now, that means a new beginning. Remember, eclipses take months to play out. And when either a planet or an asteroid or something important passes over that point, it activates it. And Mars will be at the 23rd degree very soon where Mars will be activating in opposition. It will be activating that solar eclipse of the 14th of December. Okay. Now, you're probably going to ask me, when will that happen? Let's check it out. All right, 10th of April. <laughs> Not a coincidence, is it? Right on the new moon in, as you can see up here, in Aries. So, and Mars, of course, will be sextiling. But I will come back uh, with more, more astrology. I, I just wanted to point out, especially that Juno at this time is at a very important position. Now, for those of you that will be that will be joining me on Patreon and in Tier 3, you will be able to see um, a lot more as I do the forecast ahead for each month. So I go into each transit, all the transits in the month of April. Anyway, so there's a lot of good going on in the month of April, just so you know. Now, I just want to get back to... As I was saying, that Venus will be entering, of course, uh, will be entering the sign of Aries um, in about 21 hours. And straight after that, we're going to have, we've got Mercury sextiling over to Uranus. As you can see, Mercury is at six here um, and it's sextiling over to Uranus. So the left... Uh, brain, the logical thinking with a higher mind, uh, speaks very strongly um, where the mind is concerned. Remember, this could also be helpful energy. Remember, Uranus is, I'm taking a left-hand turn, I'm going to, I need my freedom. If there's no value uh, here for me, I'm going to have that important conversation which will help release me, free me, okay? Uranus can speak of freedom as well. Um, and I do see Mercury as, uh, again, communicating, even though with difficulty, uh, bringing things up, conversations, maybe spiritual, very um, eccentric, different, unexpected conversations, which could lead to a major enlightenment. Uh, sextile is really, really helpful. I love that. Mercury is also business. So... Uranus in Taurus can be fluctuations in money, so that's very helpful where business is concerned. For those of you that are into uh, a spiritual business, anything to do with mysticism, well, anything to do with matters of the divine, remember that uh, um, that's what Pisces is. It's very magical. You know, you're able to be the magician, pull a rabbit out of the hat here with using your logic and your higher mind to even bring about um, unexpected sources of income and things that will be valuable for you, Taurus, Uranus in Taurus. Okay, straight after that, uh, we're having the exact connection of Saturn and Mars. After that, we're going to have a square. Mercury will be squaring over to both Mars and and the North Node. So a bit of a blockage there, and I do feel it's got a lot to do with um, matters that are unknown or maybe even um, hidden things which could be uh, what is the fore 
in the road here a square is not easy okay so Gemini again is the conversation the curiosity all the things I mentioned before about Gemini and of course Mercury in Pisces um, in about five days so around the 25th the Sun will be right on Venus Wow okay now we know that any planets that are very close to the Sun um, of course can uh, get burnt okay they can lose their strength when they're too close to the Sun they will lose their strength now it's interesting that you know um, what Venus is doing here um, and obviously that is a very progressed where astrology is uh, concerned but it is a very important happening here and we know that Venus is everything that we love its money its values its true love the Sun of course gives the vitality um, to even though the Sun can drain Venus still I feel because the Sun is also the ego and it's it's like I feel like there is a sense of karmic clearing because Chiron is here very close right so Venus the goddess of beauty and uh, love and everything that we hold very close to our heart will be joining the king remember the Sun is the king in the zodiac um, so straight after that we're gonna have the ex exact connection of Mars and and the North Node and remember I said that the South Node is right across there and Venus of course will be conjoining straight after that with v uh, Venus will be connecting to Chiron so we'll be looking at that open wound uh, Venus will be blessing blessing us with her beauty with her um, her love obviously this could also be connecting with someone and feeling loved even if we haven't been feeling worthy um, and then of course the Sun will connect with Chiron so everyone that will be in the next uh, week or so and I think I will leave it there I don't want to make the busy um, don't want to make the video too too big the most important thing is that we're in cardinal fire energy now so it's all systems go um, as you could see here we don't we don't have any retrogrades of planets uh, black moon Lilith is a different um, story altogether I have spoken many times about her and well black moon Lilith is squaring over to Jupiter and Jupiter is the planet of justice and expansion and growth remember that Jupiter is all about truth especially being in Aquarius Jupiter speaks about freedom being able to be free to believe in what I want to believe uh, to believe in what I've been raised to believe um, to study to this is my philosophy my opinion it's squaring over and of course as I said matters of justice come through as well justice and law remember that both Jupiter and Saturn are teachers um, now Jupiter is in a square so it's not easy connecting to black moon Lilith I feel that if there's been an injustice there's going to be talk about it remember that Jupiter expands on everything that it touches and it's um, it's as though Jupiter is blowing um, black moon Lilith up where that could be quite explosive because black moon Lilith psychologically she's she hasn't had it easy um, she feels that there's a sense of injustice she wants justice she wants balance she wants fairness and she's going she's obviously challenging Jupiter which could also be the law black moon Lilith could be a divine feminine could be the people okay so that's not an easy aspect here as well so anyway I think I will leave it there um, I've spoken about the main aspects 
this uh, video was mainly to give you uh, the thumbs up for this the beginning of a new astrological year the seasons are going to start to shift now to change uh, so looking forward to that hopefully that with the seasons that will be changing so will our lives as we've been coming out of the darkness forever there's still a lot of that going on still a lot of illusion deception Neptune in Pisces but things are starting to show up now remember that Mars is also the worry and he's you know he's rushing through he's doing the work here He's being curious, he's asking questions and also with all the lockdowns and of course Gemini is the children, it's the schools remember that Gemini and Sagittarius, Sagittarius is the teacher, Gemini is the schools, are the schools I should say. Well we've started in Greece to slowly now, they've given us some dates where we're going to start coming out of the lockdown that we've been in for almost a year now I should say. Um, so it sounds like we're starting to get a little bit of freedom showing through as the sun has started a brand new year okay hopefully this is going to be a much more pleasant new year astrologically speaking as we know the astrology affects us as well our own personal lives and a lot is being shown. Um, some of the news that I've been watching is quite, it's its things that you really don't expect to see are happening. So um, I'd love to hear your opinion on what's going on in the world as well. I would love to hear what's going on in your state, in your country. Um, we've heard some really strange and um, things that shouldn't be said on on TV, on the news that have been said, um, things that shouldn't be happening are happening. So what can I say? I'm really, I would really love to hear your opinions. Anyway, everyone, I have also put on my front page, I've put the video that I had done for the elections. It was done on the 3rd of November of 2020. Um, and as I have written on the title, it's incredible, if not the astrology part, but the tarot part of the reading. Um, if you listen to it again, a lot of it is playing out in what is happening in the world. And for those of you that are in the United States, I'd love to hear your opinion on, you know, on how, you know, are you happy with what's going on in politics in your country? What's going on with your government? I'd love to hear your news. Those of you that are interested, if you've watched the tarot portion of the elections of 2020, November 3rd of 2020, you may want to re-watch it because there's a lot of meanings in the tarot. All right, so I've got it on my front page. Those of you that are interested, check it out again. You can uh, comment be beneath the video as well. So I'm sending you all lots of love, lots of kisses, lots of blessings and lots of healing to all of you as we're hoping that this darkness will not last too long. We're only human and we can only put up with so much. Talk to you soon and again thank you for your support on Patreon.